The 2024 legislative session has come to a close in the state of South Carolina. We look at the big wins from this year, what to expect in the future, and we introduce to you the new president of Palmetto Family. That's You're all. Gonna like him. That's all today on the Palmetto Family Matters Show. Welcome in. It's the Wednesday edition of the program. Um, I can say it. We're back better than ever. Wednesday, May 22nd, in the year of our Lord, 2024. Ding. I've been long awaited for that ding. Mitchell Prosser joining me. I'm Justin Hall. We need to be reintroduced here, I feel like. Justin Hall, Mitch Prosser. I have a new dependent. And we bring in the new president of Palmetto Family, Dr. Steve Pettit. Thank you, Justin. I'm glad to be uh, be on the show. I've been talking with you every day now for a couple of weeks. I feel weird saying introducing, yes. um, but we do have to introduce you to the audience. And, and so for, for the folks who are listening and who are glad we're back on their podcast feed today, it's just a quick summation of your story to this point and then what brought you to Palmetto Family. Well, I, uh, I am a native South, Carolin- South Carolinian. I was uh, raised here in the capital city of Columbia from kindergarten all the way through high school. Graduated from Dreer High School mm. and went to the Citadel and finished there and went on to Bob Jones University for my seminary education. And then in 1980, God took me out of South Carolina, which I prayed he would always bring me back. And I was worked in a local church ministry for some five years and then traveled for 29 years as a full-time local church evangelist in 2014. I, w- I accepted the role as the president of Bob Jones University, where I served for nine years until last year and went back into the Ministry of Evangelism. And then this past January, I received a phone call from the chairman of the search committee of Palmetto Family and asked if I would consider the role of being the president. And after some period of time, uh, I accepted it, and I'm so thankful to be here uh, this is my state, uh, South Carolina, uh, and the people here are my people, and I'm just happy to be able to serve the Lord here, especially in the matter of being a voice for biblical values mm-hmm. in South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Dr. Pettit, I love something that you've said so many times over the last couple of months as we've gotten to know you and, and your style of leadership. And I love what you sa- you've you said, and maybe you can speak to this a, little, a little bit more with our listeners. Um, you always wanted to serve the state in some way, shape, or form, but didn't necessarily want to be a politician. That is correct. So (laughs) this is the perfect opportunity for you. Yeah, it was kind of really interesting. You know, um, the Lord called me into a preaching ministry. No question in my mind I was called to preach when I was probably 19 years old or after I came to faith in Christ. Uh, And that really is my heartbeat. That's really what I do. That's really who I am. But at the same time, being a South Carolinian growing up here, um, loving the culture, the people. I've always wanted to be able to serve the state. I was able to do that as a college president. But this is just really, really unique because it really touches the whole state through the state house and through the church house. There you go. I like it. And uh, being able to encourage uh, God's people to be involved in, in government and to operate on biblical principles. So, man, I'm excited about Good. doing this. There's a lot, and, and to, to join when you did, a lot of great things happened in the legislative session uh, this go-around. I just want to highlight them. We're going to come back and touch on a few. Um, the marijuana bill stalled yet again. We'll get into that. Hate crimes did not pass this year. Horse gambling, which apparently uh, you've got to gamble on horses in order for the equine industry to thrive. That did not happen this year. The ESG agenda, the environmental, social justice, governance scores not happening in South Carolina. Foster care reform passed in the House and Senate again as well. Educational freedom. We're continuing to move the ball forward there. And then the two ones that if you've followed along with Palmetto Family for any couple of months at this point. You, you know about these. The Child Online Safety Act and the Help Not Harm Bill. So let's start with Help Not Harm. Uh, Mitch, we brought in Chloe Cole back last fall, fall of 2023, to uh, First Baptist North Spartanburg to talk about the dangerous ideology of the transgenderism movement, specifically for Chloe and thousands upon thousands of others. This idea of detransitioning and that they were sold a bill of goods that wasn't true. And now they're suffering the repercussions of these 
irreversible and irreparable harmful treatments and uh, surgeries. But in South Carolina now, with the governor's signature in the very near future, that's not going to happen here. That's right. You know, as we, we invested eight months in this Help Not Harm campaign, I think the focus was continually, continually on ensuring that children were protected, that they were safe here in the state of South Carolina. The focus was not on harming anyone, but helping people, specifically children who are confused and for parents who were not quite sure what to do. This doesn't limit their ability to get their child help. It does, however, direct them to the resources that will get them the true help that they need. It does keep children from going down an irreversible path or a path that could be irre irreversible either through chemical or surgical treatment. Um, I love what Senator Cash said in his comments on the floor, uh, and there's so many people to thank here, uh, but Senator Cash said one of the best things that we can do when it comes to children who are confused, who are struggling with a transgender ideology or gender confusion is to watchfully wait and make sure that they get the help that they need through the process. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I can go back to October and thank all of you, some of you listening right now that were with us in October in Spartanburg for Senator Verd and Sen Senator um, Kimbrell. So many in the House, the Family Caucus under the leadership of Chairman Representative John McCravey, Speaker Smith, and, and the Majority Leader Davey Hyatt. Those men and women need to be thanked for championing this effort and, and really getting it across the finish line um, throughout this entire session. And I know we're moving quick. Uh, Dr. Pettit, if you could, just uh, a summation of this Help Not Harm bill, that's the legislation that passed. And we understand transgender surgeries and treatments. I, I think in today's world, we get that. The biblical worldview behind it. What informs the position that Palmetto family and Christians from around the state are taking on this issue? Yeah, I think it goes back to uh, the scripture as the authority of God, the inspiration of the Bible that has been given to us so that we have the we have God's mind. We know what God thinks. And really in the first 11 chapters of Genesis, God answers pretty much all the issues that we're facing today. And when you consider it, it is quite simple. Uh, Christ, when he was asked questions, spoke very simply, would often say that the scripture says, and mm -hmm. then he'll quote the scripture. Mm -hmm. And as we look at the Bible, it is very clear that God created man in his own image, both male and female. So as we are created a male or a female, we are created in the image of God. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so the whole issue of, of uh, transgenderism is really not about your physical body. It's about your own identity. And your identity is established by the Lord in creation. Right. So I yeah. think it really comes back to the belief in creation. Absolutely. It's good. And so this is, this is crucial for us to believe and to say, look, if we're going to pass a law... Uh, against that, then we're really passing laws against God's revealed truth... And uh, as we've been saying all along, Proverbs 14, 34, righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach to any people. The word exalt means to lift it up. It means that that nation becomes a place of influence. It becomes an example. And when we do things the right way, according to God's standards. And so um, this is the right thing for our state to do because it is a part of righteousness. And then we move on. I, I want to go to the bill that didn't pass, and then we'll finish with the one that did. So let us let me go to medical marijuana, the Compassionate Care Act. You can't see me right now. I just put that in air quotes. The Compassionate Care Act, because we love to label certain legislation. This bill has gone up before in the Senate and passed. It's gone to the mm -hmm. House before and failed, and it failed again this time around. Mm -hmm. uh, Mitch, we've, we've discussed medical marijuana at length on this program for three years now. When it comes to this legislation, anything different that people need to know about, or are we just copy-pasting 
from previous with some minor differences? Yes and no. The argument made from the Senate floor was that this was simply a copy and paste, that this was the same old bill that we've seen over and over again. However, as several senators and House members, for that matter, pointed out, there were several substantive changes to the bill. Uh, you know, we've said all along at Palmetto Family, there are certain criteria, if met, we would encourage for people to be able to try novel medicine. Uh, by the way, that's already on the books, 1980. Uh, if it was FDA approved, if it was prescribed by a doctor, issued by a licensed pharmacist, then there were certain parameters, but there's still some issues here. And I know Dr. Pettit's going to get to that in just a minute. I think the biggest issue here is that this sets up the marijuana industrial complex. This bill, and it's going to continue to be perpetuated in the years to come. Sure. People beware. What it does is it sets up not only seed to sale and multiple dispensaries, but it's got an eight-year sunset, meaning the legislature has to come back and revisit this in eight years. Now, this is a multi-billion dollar industry that's going to come to the state of South Carolina, and it won't pay for itself in the form of medicinal use of marijuana. Thus, in a ma at a maximum of eight years, most states it's around five, mm -hmm. the state legislature and lawmakers will come back and say, listen, it's not making any money. How about we just go fully blown recreational use? I see what you did there with fully blown. Okay. So what we're doing here is setting up a marijuana industrial complex that we can flip the switch in five to eight years and say, okay, now we are fully invested mm -hmm. in, as Dr. Pettit's going to call it, sinful activity, right. which is absolutely true. The concern is, is that good for the people of South Carolina? Is it good for Palmetto families, mm -hmm. or is it harmful? And the answer is... It's harmful. It's harmful. Dr. Pettit, we're, we're, we're traversing in things that we didn't think we'd have to traverse in, and I can't believe I have to break this down, but we might need to mention that the use of hallucinogenic drugs are sinful. Right. And the use of them, the use of those drugs is a sin, I should say. So you articulated it well before the ad hoc committee. Uh, we, we've, we've talked about the FDA and the doctor and pharmacist level, but when it comes to just the biblical worldview on marijuana and these types of drugs, it, they can't intersect at all. Right. It, it doesn't work, right? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, obviously, and I think Mitch has said it well, you, you want to work with the medical community and the giving out of appropriate <clears throat> drugs that are helpful to people. And uh, we, we know that there's a part of the marijuana plant that does do that. We know that. We also know that the smoking of pot, as it was so called when I was a teenager, yeah. uh, was in, has an intention. The intention mm -hmm. is to get high. Yes. So the question has to do with, is it wrong to get high? And, of course, we know the Bible is quite clear about the matter of alcohol consumption in that to get drunk is to sin. We know that. That's both Old Testament. That's both New Testament. We also know that involvement in drug, any kind of drug that is intended to bring you into an altered state. That's why we call it a hallucinogenic drug. You hallucinate with it is intended, getting high is, is like getting drunk. Sure. It's, it's leading into an altered state. So I, I think, I think the, the role of government is not to enact laws that lead people into sinful behavior. Jesus spoke about that. He talked about uh, offenses coming, but woe to be the one that, that basically puts it in a place where those offenses, those sins, offenses can come and he called it a stumbling block. And I think we will recall the imagery of Jesus. Mm -hmm. and he said, yeah. if you're going to do that, then take a millstone and tie it, tie your neck to a rope and then take the millstone that the rope's tied to and throw them into the sea. Pretty heavy, heavy piece of equipment. Uh, millstones are big. Yeah, yeah they're big. big. I, I've seen real mm -hmm. mill, millstones in Israel. And mm -hmm. I think the point of the matter is that, that our governmental leaders 
according to the Bible, are really shepherds. We read the Old Testament about the kings, and, and I mean, David was a shepherd, and God mm-hmm. called him the shepherd of Israel. Shepherds are leaders, and just like you have a shepherd of a church, uh, our governmental leaders are shepherding people, and they need to shepherd them in a right way. Mm-hmm. Uh, we read Psalm 23, that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall mm-hmm. not want. He makes good. me to lead down in great green pa- makes me to lay down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He leads me in the paths of rightness, righteousness. So mm-hmm. I, I just think that that as I said to some of our representatives and senators, that that you are making decisions and, and if those decisions are made and we cross that bridge, we will not be able to go back. And it will bring about a change in our society that I think that we will look back and say that was a mistake. And I think there are other mistakes that have been made before. Last one, and this is a mistake I think that could have been made had it not been passed, but thankfully it did. The Child Online Safety Act, or it is a form of an age verification bill. Uh, Mitch and I have been uh, working with many others on this piece of legislation for months. Uh, Bill sponsor Travis Moore and and the entire family caucus made this a priority item to begin the session. This bill passed in the House within the first two weeks of session with only one vote against it. Uh, it passed the final day in both houses. Uh, it's going to become law uh, in the near future as well when the governor signs it. This bill, simply put, makes sure that websites that produce at least a certain percentage of adult material adult content or adult material, pornography, pornography, uh, that they must institute an age verification system by which a minor cannot access it. It's a novel idea that in today's day and age, you you have to pass legislation to keep that from children on the internet and there are people who are against it, but this is something that, listen, and there are many people who can speak to this. Pornography is a is a harmful thing to your to your mind, to your heart, and inevitably, and most importantly, to your soul. It affects how you deal in relationships with with other people, how you view uh, for men, how how you view women, how how you view society. It affects you at your deepest level because it is taking something that God has ordained and just perverting it in many other ways. And there are studies that show that there are, you know, the the wilder LGBTQ movement, they're funneling people to that through pornography. So, uh, Dr. Pett, I think it's very, this one might be another softball, just tee it up for you as well. Um, but it, it baffles my mind that in South Carolina, we hadn't had anything like this to this point yet. We're sort of on the leading edge edge of this. We're almost at the tip of the spear on this on this legislation. Um, keeping a virtuous society, that, that shining city on a hill, think Pilgrim's Progress, this is the kind of bill that has to get passed in order to make sure our children are protected, not only from transgender surgeries like Help Not Harm, but just the very idea of unseemly, dangerous content that children or adults shouldn't be viewing, let alone children who aren't nearly prepared for it. Yeah, I, I think the the idea of the law in and of itself, as it says, is a safety act. <clears throat> we have we have to make laws to protect us from uh, what is going on in our society and culture, and it's very different than the day and age when I grew up. If you wanted to see something, you had to go to a store, you had mm-hmm. to find a magazine and hide so that nobody could see you. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is not this is not the same thing, and. And I've been in the ministry and working with people now for 44 years, and I can honestly say that the single greatest destructive habit that a young man can be involved in uh, is involved in pornography because Mm -hmm. he bears that into his adult years. And oftentimes when we find moral failures in life, it, it usually goes back to, not always, of course, but it often goes back to uh, pornography in the in the young men that we have to counsel in uh, college settings and, and uh, the young people that we've met. It, it's it's all due to this breakdown in marriages, and and I and I believe that this this is also true, uh, as you've already mentioned, mm-hmm. uh, that that is the pathway that has led to uh, more acts of sinful behavior. And 
Folks, what we really wanted to do, we got a much more long-form content we want, we, that we want to get into in the days, weeks, and months to come. Uh, but as we wrap up the program for today on this Wednesday, uh, Dr. Steve Pettit taking the helm as president of Palmetto Family. Uh, doctor, if you could just give a quick summation that folks can understand where Palmetto Family is headed here in the very near future. Well, Palmetto Family has an incredible history, a great foundation. It was founded back in 1994. And essentially, it has always been the, the goal, the mission has, to, has been to bring biblical principles into the centers of influence in our state. And that's particularly the state house, but it's also the church house and it's the family house in teaching people uh, biblical principles of living. And so that has been our heartbeat. And so we are the voice for biblical values in the state of South Carolina. Our desire is to uh, really be very, very strong in our positions to help our, our legislators to understand what is the truth of God's word and to really give them really clear biblical education so that they make good decisions. And also we want, we want the state of South Carolina, the people of this state to understand that, that uh, what goes on in the state house, the politics that goes on in the state house, is a fluid, um, dynamic um, organism, and, and decisions are being made, and that they have influence. That's right. They have yep. influence. Absolutely. And if our state is influenced in a negative way, we do not just blame politicians. We need to say to our own people, you are responsible as an individual for everybody that's voted into office. Mm -hmm. And so we want to we want to do what we can in our part uh, for our wonderful state uh, to see that righteousness is exalted. Couldn't say it better. Righteousness is exalted. That's that's the goal we hope for. A lot more to come for you. Uh, we're excited to be back joining with you here on the Palmetto Family Matters show. A lot of great content coming. It, I'm, I'm telling you, you're really going to like the stuff that's coming your way on this program and everything you're going to get from Palmetto Family Council in the coming days, weeks, months ahead. For Mitch Prosser and Dr. Steve Pettit and Kevin Caiello, who we got to get him on the show at some point, folks. I promise you it would be a treat. I'm Justin Hall. Thank you so much for listening to the program today. Connect with us. Go to palmettofamily.org. Download the Palmetto Family Council app. Invest in the work that we're doing. If you believe in the mission, invest in the work that we are doing here at Palmetto Family. And we will talk to you very soon right here on the Palmetto Family Matters Show.